this past Thursday in preparation for today's service readings, both for the hearing of them and for me in anticipation of writing this sermon based on them, we St. Paul's Bible discussions were sort of all over the place. We again went over the ghastly gospel reading that Reverend Krista had to deal with last Sunday, the one about Herod, brought up in the shadow of his horrible father, Herod the Great, about the two Herodias's, Herod's wife and her daughter, and the request for the head of John the Baptist, and the fulfilling of that request by Herod, and the actual serving of it to him at the dinner he was hosting for his followers. And thank goodness, Reverend Krista lightened our horror load by alluding to today's gospel reading, that there would be better news coming some good, good news a week away. And we did hear good news teaching today. It is about what a church really is. But first, in last week's Old Testament reading also, like today from 2 Samuel, we heard about the Ark of the Covenant, the Holy of Holies. This Ark contained the protected, written, revered laws of the Hebrew people. The ark was carried from place to place with the deepest of respect and tradition. These traditions that had developed over the centuries as the people of Israel moved from place to place with no permanent home. We also heard of King David and the people dancing and making music and joy around that ark because Israel was now strong and could settle down in one place. Under David, Israel was a people protected by God's providence in war, in victory, in famine, in bounty. So the ark was placed inside its tent in a place that was to become its permanent home, the city of David, the city that would become Jerusalem. In Israel's jubilant celebration, David did a most kingly and shepherdly thing. He did the most godly and gracious thing. He fed, he fed the multitude. He blessed the people and provided each man and woman with a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisin. Dinner with dessert. In today's story from 2 Samuel, we hear of David wanting to provide the Ark of the Covenant, a better residence than a tent. Although I wonder if David's purpose was to give God's Ark a better place to honor God, honor, honor God, or if his real purpose was to provide a better place to flaunt his own acquired power, spoils of war, his acquired earth, earthly wealth. We'll never know, of course. Nevertheless, it is very clear what God's wishes are. God doesn't need a temple. God has done just fine with a tent during all the years of the Hebrews' wandering. He had been situated right there among the people as they wandered, warred, grieved, and celebrated and grew. God was literally in them and with them all that time. The tent, not a temple, served quite nicely. God now makes it clear. God's house was a house of people. David's lineage house that would be a safe place for God's people to grow and prosper under God's protection as it had been all along during their wandering. The gospel reading, including the verses in the middle we didn't hear, the story of feeding the 5,000, is a set of connected stories of ministry of serving. It is how Mark tells the story of contrasting space and place. Last week, Herod's palace of horrors in excess contrasted to this week's apostles coming back from their training on the job to the world where Jesus had sent them and 
to the world where Jesus had sent them and where they were learning to be leaders of mercy and loving kindness. And when they did come back, and after a very brief rest, Jesus showed them his version of hospitality, of church. Jesus is holy of holies. His temple was right in the midst of the people, making sure they were fed, they were comforted, where they would listen to him, and where they were provided mercy and loving kindness. When I was in elementary school in the late 50s at Blessed Sacrament Catholic School in Syracuse, New York, the dear nuns encouraged us to make an after-school visit across the driveway to the church. I learned to like those visits. The church was lacking, however, the church was lacking an architectural interest. Its walls were at least three stories of straight up undecorated cement block. And until the parish was able to acquire some stained glass windows from a torn down church, the windows of Blessed Sacrament Church were just foggy glass. What I loved about the space was the warmth in winter, the cool in summer, and the quiet any time of the year. I love telling myself the story of the Stations of the Cross as I travel from station to station. I love the Infant of Prague doll that the altar guild so dutifully outfitted with the different colored finery when the church year season changed. Yes, I loved all that. And I was in elementary school. As I matured and began to more clearly understand that God's call to us was to be merciful, to be loving, to be generous, and to be kind, I realized that the church building, with all its accoutrements of stature and beauty, was a place of peace and gracious traditions. It was a place where I would come to recharge on Sunday and at other times when needed, where I would put the stresses of the past week behind me and walk out the doors determined to give the world the best I had one more time. St. Paul, in his first, first letter to the Corinthians, seems to speak to my change of understanding of church. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. As I grew in my education of the world, in my understanding of what God expected of me by sharing my mercy and loving kindness, I grew to realize more clearly that the real place and meaning of church is where each of us is every day. We never know when and where, just what and who we are will be just the thing that fits the moment. We are church as we move lovingly and mercifully about the world. Our church buildings are places of warmth and cool and beautiful art in their music and vestments and hangings and windows and traditions. They are places to come for comfort, to be inspired by the art and by each other, and to be delighted in them. But our real church is the church we must greet once we go out the doors. Mercy and loving kindness builds our church. It has no doors. It has no limits to how far it can soar. It is as boundless as space. Quite simply, church is the God in us coming out to greet God's people. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen.